All right. Time for our prophecy update. Uh, we happen to believe that we're living in what the Bible calls uh, the last days. All you have to do is look around and see what's taking place geopolitically. And if you know what God's word says about the last days, you're left with no other conclusion other than the signs of the times are exactly as God said they would. For today's update, I want to connect four news headlines with their corresponding Bible prophecy and scripture references. Now, it's important to understand that these headlines that we're going to look at are recent within the last uh, week, actually maybe nine days. Uh, what's so astounding about this is that everything is happening so quickly. You know, when we first started doing these prophecy updates back in 2006, I would usually just, you know, pray about and, and select one uh, newsworthy article or headline and talk about it and its prophetic implications. Well, now uh, it's more of a, of a matter of trying to narrow it down in the interest of time with so much happening as to how much we can look at and cover as it relates to uh, Bible prophecy. So what we're going to do is first look at the news headline and then we're going to connect it to the Bible prophecy and then we're going to look at the scriptural reference. So the first one, this was on um, Friday the uh, 14th. The headline was Medvedev to Assad. Israel intends to use nuclear weapons on Syrian cities. Uh, this is interesting. Medvedev is the president of Russia. Uh, really, better said, he's the puppet president of Putin's Russia. I know that's a mouthful, but it's the truth. He really is uh, under Putin and is really controlled by Putin. And he now, with Assad, who is the president of Syria, is warning them that Israel intends to strike them with a nuclear attack. Well, this is what the Bible says is going to happen. Uh, the Bible prophesies that there will be the destruction of Damascus, which is the capital city of uh, Syria. It's found in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1. You know, it's always astonished me about Bible prophecy, especially as it relates to the Middle East, being, being from the Middle East, is how that Syria is not mentioned in Ezekiel's prophecy. They are conspicuously absent from this alliance of nations that the prophet Ezekiel describes will come together and attack Israel. In other words, the implication is that something happens to Syria prior. It is my belief that we will see the fulfillment of Isaiah 17, 1 before the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38, which we'll talk about uh, here in just a moment with another one of our uh, headlines. Now, here's where it ties in together, and this is one of the dynamics of Bible prophecy, is that it all fits together like a puzzle. You have all these prophetic pieces of the puzzle that are all coming together, and you begin to see the picture, the big picture, if you will. See, Russia is very much involved with Iran in their sole goal, which is the destruction and the annihilation of the nation Israel. So Syria, now threatened by Israel with a preemptive strike against them, is falling into place, playing into God's prophetic program. You know, I have to say, in all the years that I've been both studying and teaching Bible prophecy, that it's really exciting in a uh, sick sort of way because uh, when I hear Ahmadinejad talk about, you know, in his denial of the Holocaust, all while he's trying to start another one and in his uh, goal to eliminate Israel and wipe her off the map, and then I hear, you know, what's coming out of Russia and I hear what's coming out of, you know, Syria, it just reminds me of God's faithfulness to his people, Israel. None of them will prevail. 
The prophet Isaiah says that no weapon forged against them will prosper. So Ahmadinejad and uh, Assad and Medvedev and Putin and all of these guys can say all they want to say, do all they want to do, but they will not succeed. They will be met with failure because God's word says that he will come to their defense, not the United States. The United States isn't even mentioned in Bible prophecy. So we don't come to Israel's aid. We've already all but turned our back on Israel. So this will now force Israel to turn to their God, better said, turn back to their God, who will come to their aid, come to their help against all of these nations, against all of these odds, and they will prevail. Here's the second headline, also on Friday the 14th. Interesting. Biometric cash machine lands in Europe. The Bible prophecy is that there will be this forcing of a cashless one world economy which is tracked by an implanted computer chip. Uh, it's already there technologically. In other words, the ability to do this is already there. What's not there yet is the acceptance of it. It's being introduced, it's being tried, and people are getting ready now because initially it will be uh, voluntary, but eventually it will become mandatory where we read in Revelation chapter 13 that the Antichrist will force everyone, small and great, rich and poor, to accept this, take this mark, which they believe will be a uh, chip that will be implanted in the forehand or the forehead. And what's interesting about that is that that's where the heat in the body is able to power this uh, biochip, which by the way contains all of your information, not just medical information. And in the day and age of ID theft, as bad as that's getting, uh, that'll take care of it. That's going to solve a lot of problems, or seemingly so. So what will happen now is the Antichrist will bring the world under his control in a one world government, a one world economy, and a one world religion. The third headline, Saturday, uh, May 15th, poll, more Americans say U.S. morality getting worse. Well, this is exactly what the Bible says will happen in the last days. Things will wax worse and worse, and there would be a continual moral freefall into godlessness. The Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy in his second epistle, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and we studied this a little while back, he lists all of these characteristics that will mark the last days. And if you look at each and every one of them, at their core, the common denominator is, it is wickedness waxing worse, it is evil waxing worse, it is godlessness waxing worse and worse. You know, I'm not of the school that there's going to be a revival. I believe there will be a, a final gathering until the fullness of the Gentiles is complete, but I don't see anywhere in the scriptures where there's going to be this massive revival before Jesus comes back for his church. In fact, it's really the, the antithesis of that. The Bible describes an apostasy where people are falling away from the, and parting from the faith, and, and it gets worse and worse. And this is a sign of the last days. And it's interesting to me that this was a survey done amongst Americans. In other words, people in the United States are admitting <laughs> that things are getting worse. For those of you who are, you know, close in proximity to my age, you know, 25, uh, th <laughs> think back to, uh, you know, 10 years ago, even 15 years ago. Do you remember when there was a murder that it would make the front page. And I mean, it was big news. Today, oh my goodness, it's commonplace. We have become so desensitized to the reality of the world, the condition of the world in which we live today. I mean, you know, it's getting to the point now where I cannot watch a news broadcast on television with my children present in the room. I mean, some of the horrid and horrific and unspeakable uh, evil that 